Welcome to the 4-1 podcast. And this section uh, is uh, start of chapter 4, which is ecosystems and communities. And this section is on the role of climate. W- let's start with some definitions here. Uh, weather, we're going to say, is the day-to-day condition of Earth's atmosphere at a particular time and place. And I think that one's pretty simple. We've seen that before. And the climate refers to the year average year after year conditions of temperature and precipitation in a particular region. For instance, we could say that uh, in the North Pole or Alaska, it's relatively cold and the temperature rarely gets above 50 and goes down well below freezing. Whereas if we were in the Caribbean, say in, uh, let's go to Hawaii, you could say the temperatures you know, rarely get below 70 and they're usually in the 80s and it's usually very warm and sunny and humid. That would be climate. What is climate caused by? It's caused by trapping of the heat by the atmosphere, latitude, transport of heat by winds and ocean currents, amount of precipitation, and the shape and elevation of land masses. We'll cover some of these in a little detail in a moment here. So let's start with the first one. How does the greenhouse effect maintain the biosphere's temperature range? What the greenhouse effect does is it traps the heat energy of sunlight and that maintains the Earth's uh, temperature range. Now, this graphic I chose to show uh, one of the gases that is trapped is carbon dioxide. And I'm showing it coming out of the smokestack uh, just to reinforce the point that a lot of carbon dioxide is actually made by man. Other gases include methane and water vapor. Now here's a, a picture of the greenhouse effect. And sunlight hits the Earth. It bounces off the Earth's surface up into the atmosphere where it becomes trapped. And some, some of it escapes and some of it is actually trapped, that carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. And this is what we call the greenhouse effect. Let's look at the effect of latitude. Now, this is uh, this um, globe uh, that you see right here is uh, in the position of December 21st, which is the winter solstice. This is the point where the tilt of the Earth has its greatest effect on uh, how sun hits the Earth. And you can see that the it strikes it at different angles and right now you're going to see this is the winter solstice you're going to see a picture when it's at the uh, autumnal equinox and the spring equinox or vernal equinox where the earth is at a very different tilt and you can see that the earth hits uh, this area the sun I'm sorry hits this area at a pretty almost straight on you can see the equator is right there and then as you go further north it hits it at a more uh, oblique angle until very little light actually reaches um, the nor- uh, reaches the northern part of the globe. In fact, the North Pole is dark the whole day in December 21st. Whereas if you notice the tilt, the South Pole actually is getting a lot of light. So this is going to be the coldest time of the year for the North Pole. This is going to be the warmest time of the year for the North Pole. In fact, uh, people in the southern hemisphere, the southern part below the equator, this is their summertime, whereas, as we know, this is our winter time because the sun is hitting hitting us at a more extreme angle. And uh, and the thing about the equator is, is it basically gets struck sunlight the entire year, so it's always warm there. And at the north and south poles, the sun's rays strike the earth at a lower angle. Earth's three main climate zones because of this angle and the effect it has on the heating, there are three main climate zones, polar, temperate, and tropical. And here's another look at it, too. This, is, uh, this would be on the uh, so like September 21st or um, do, 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 March 21st is when the um, this is what the s- where the s- how the, the wobble of the Earth. There really is no tilt at all to the Earth, and you can see there's direct sunlight here. Every point in the globe gets the same amount of sunlight that day, and you can see that the light hits at a very 
low angle here and here, whereas it's very direct sunlight at the equator. So let's talk about these zones. The polar zones, uh, polar zone, it's cold, very low angle almost the entire year, as we showed. And they actually have a latitude that tells us where the uh, polar zone starts. Here's the temperate zone, and this is between the polar zone and the tropics, which we'll talk about in a moment. And this is where we live. We live in the temperate zone. And there's a the angle of the sun changes uh, over the course of the year, and this has a this is where it has the biggest effect on on the uh, temperature. We can have a 90 degree day on July 21st, and then end up with a uh, a 11 degree day on January 21st, whereas the temperature range is much less in the uh, cr in the tropics, and the, and the range is much less over the year in the polar zone. Um, like I just said, it ranges from hot and cold, depending, of course, on the season. Then here's the tropic zones, and this is near the equator. That looks like a lovely place. And they receive, like I said, direct or nearly direct sunlight year-round, and so it makes it always warm. Now, because of the, uh, because the Earth has land masses and bodies of water, there's unequal heating over the globe over the year, and that ends up causing winds and ocean currents, which we're going to talk about. And it changes the heat throughout the entire biosphere of the globe. Now, here's air. And we're going to see as air gets heated here at the equator, it's going to rise up, and then it's going to circulate until it gets to the um, until it gets to the poles where it's cold. And as it gets cold, it starts to descend. So, warm air over the equator rises, cooler air over the poles sinks towards the ground. And this movement is air currents or winds the actual movement of it. Now, not only do they move uh, up and down, so to speak, they also move north and south and east and west, and these are the way the prevailing winds work on the globe. Um, and we, uh, if you look at North America, you can see our winds basically run west to, uh, to east, um, which is basically the way I always think of our weather coming is west to east. Now you also have heating and cooling of uh, in the ocean, and as you might be able, to, as you might predict, uh, cold water sinks, and uh, when it reaches a warmer area, as it gets warmed, it rises. So what you're seeing here is uh, water right here coming up to the poles. It's starting to sink, and that's what this little fold right here is showing. As it gets closer, uh, it will travel. When the water reaches a warm area, like right here, it's going to come up to the top, and now you have warm surface flow. And you also get water moved at the surface by winds. This causes ocean currents, and which is going another way of transporting heat. And you also can see that the water itself actually changes the air above it. For instance, uh, over body of water, air will be cooled, and as it moves uh, over the water, uh, as it moves towards the land, it starts to heat up again. So you start getting these uh, breezes off the water. So um, ocean currents can cool the air above them, uh, warm them, and that also is going to affect the weather and the climate. And here's a picture of the ocean currents to show you the patterns that they follow. Um, I'm always surprised how warm winters are in northern Europe, and a lot of, sometimes it's be, uh, especially England. They rarely get any snow, and they say the part of the reason why is they get this band of warm water going near England, so it c prevents them from actually having a lot of snow, which I always found interesting. Let's go on to the quiz.